Today we're going to build some fun little sequences on Learn Grand MA2, episode number six, create and edit sequences. Hi, my name is Jonas, and today on Learn Grand MA2, the show where you learn a professional lighting console completely for free because the software and the visualizer is free. Check out episode number one if you haven't already. Uh, today we're going to create sequences and that's going to be our first sort of visual content that we're actually going to create and then fire off and then change around to give it a completely different look and feel. And this is actually going to be a lot of fun. So I'm excited to have you on board. Uh, this is the show that we ended up last week. If you didn't watch last week's show or if you're just joining me now in this series, uh, you can find the show as a download in the video description. So today what I want to do is actually recreate this look right here. So whenever we're pressing go on this executor, the sequence that's stored inside here will actually turn off one of these LED bars and then make it fade out really nicely. And so let's recreate that. Let's go over to our main window. Let's drag this corner down here to give us a little more space. Click inside of an empty tile and then hit the sequence pool. Now again, pools are all of these different collections that uh, actually make up your own content that you created for your light show. And these are the sequences. Now what's really interesting is that this executor right here, X LED something something, you can actually find it over here. So all this executor has is the assignment of that sequence to this executor. So the, the sequence doesn't live inside of these executors, but actually the sequence lives inside of the sequence pool. Uh, what you do is just you assign it to an executor in order to play it back live. So now let's uh, go over here and recreate that first step. Let's select all of these LED bars. Wait, six, that's like the first part. All right, up to here. And I'll press add add to give it a full dimmer. And now what's interesting is that we already see some color over here, even though we just turn on the dimmer. And that's actually due to this sequence still running. You can see here that this last cue is still selected. So just make sure to hit off. Uh, another trick, if you kind of get confused what might be still running, is to actually press off two times and then you see a list of all the sequences, effects and so on that are still running. Just click on it to terminate it. And now you can see that um, the blue color disappeared. So. Let's clear out the programmer again, since we took care of that. Let's scroll up here. All right, and now let's select these six bars. Add, add to give them a nice color. I mean, to give them a nice dimmer. <laughs> and then go over to the color tab, click on special dialog to bring up the color picker. And let's dial in a nice shade of blue. Yeah, just about like that, all right. And let's click into this field and set it up to be at 30. So like that, we can actually easily write it down on a sheet of paper. Take out your pen. And now I'm going to write 0, 30, 100, because these are the three values that we see in here for R, D, and B. So just like that, hang on to that. This will be really useful for the next steps. All right, perfect. Dimmer set. Uh, Color is set, so now I'll just go store and store it inside of an empty tile. Now, what we learned last week in the episode on pro on the programmer, and again, it's it's linked down in the video description if you want to go back and educate yourself on the programmer. What we learned last week is that whenever we don't turn off a value when we program sequences, it's actually going to stay on, and that's the concept of tracking. So now what we want to do is Turn the, the dimmer off because we also want it to fade out, right? And then hit store, go to that sequence again, create second queue. Now we're going to select the next set of LED bars. Let's go up to 12. And over here in MA3D, we can always see by these yellow dashes which parts of our uh, fixture setup of our show are selected. So again, add, add, go over to color, and now we can see, or now we use our little cheat sheet, 0, 
30 and then 100 is already set. Perfect. Go store again. Click in here. Perfect. Already three queues. By the way, what I just did is I just right clicked on this tile and that will usually show you the contents. All right, then let's dim it down again. Store. Bam. Max LED bars. Up to 18. Add add to set the dimmer, color, zero. By the way, what you just noticed is that sometimes it doesn't really work. Try to hit the number with your left mouse button. And then store, add zero. This is a shortcut, by the way, to set the dimmer value. So whenever you just go at something, that always sets the dimmer. All right, last set of LED bars. Let's select it. Here we go. Add add, color, zero. You get the deal. 30, 100. All right, store. Then add zero. And now we can clear out the programmer. All right. So we have this beautiful little sequence. How can we step through it? Um, we're gonna see how that works conveniently, but naturally the way that you wanna go about this are these buttons. So just go press, go plus, and then click on your sequence. And now you can see that it plays back all of these beautiful little steps, which are called cues, by the way. You could also use these buttons up here and we'll see the difference between the two in a second. Um, What's kind of strange though is if we right click on this and again right click always brings up the edit menu most of the time sometimes it doesn't work um so we don't like we we see the content over here but like if we go go plus i don't know we don't we don't even see what's currently being played back right so now what we want to do is actually assign it to a programmer now what we want to do is actually assign it to an executor because executors so now what we want to do is assign it to an executor because executors. So now what we want to do is assign it to an executor because executors actually have a lot of nice built-in tools whenever you play back a sequence with them that will really help you to edit that sequence um, in a really convenient way. So go assign, click on your sequence, and then click on one of these empty executor slots. And again, these executors down here, they look different from these over here. Uh, these have three buttons and these down here only have one button. Um, and that's because these are called button executors. You can still set the value though, like the, the brightness level by clicking and holding this little piece right here. And you also have a button to go through. And now you can already see that's really, that's a lot better. And we can already tell down here which queue we're currently looking at. But it gets better. Um, left click on these right here, or right click apparently. And now we have the same buttons as before. They just look slightly different. This is the go plus, and these are these buttons up here. And we'll see how they are different to each other in just a second. Now, if we go back to our executor and we click on that, we can see that it always fades out really nicely. So we don't have to tap go on every step, but we tap go and then it fades out. And to create that look, don't forget to turn it off. To create that look, what we wanna do is take a look at fade times and also the trigger type. So first let's talk about trigger type. Now if I press on this play button up here, you can see they all have a go trigger. And that means you have to press go to trigger that cue. Now what you saw is that I actually selected all of these. So now when we right press on to this selection, we can actually change all of these at once. So just go to time and you can see that the trigger time is already set for you to one second. And now you can see every step being triggered after a second, but it's still not fading. So let's try out a second type. Let's go to follow. And now we can see it just goes nuts. By the way, this is a great trick for creating some really fast moving sequences. And this, this can be actually really, really cool. So right now it looks sort of sort of funky, but um, really this, this can, can make for some, some great looks. So but just by changing around these triggers, and we won't take a look at these three for now, just concentrate on go, time, and follow. So by playing around with these different trigger types, you can already create some dramatically different looks. We still haven't figured out how to do the fade out. So let's just set all these back to go. 
for now. And now let's select all of the values in here in the fade column. You can probably already guess what happens. Now when we go and play back the sequence, it actually fades in and out. Actually, let's set this to time. Select out of the time column and set it to 0 0.5. So it goes a little bit faster. So now we can see we have some fade, but it's still different to what we saw earlier, what we're trying to replicate. Because if I open up this executor, it's just bam there and then it fades out. And that's actually one of my favorite looks, by the way. So we don't really want to have a fade in. What to do? Now here's the simple trick. Why don't we actually just remove parts of these fades? So that the step where we just want the lights to turn on without any fade, we just set the fade to zero. Ooh, fancy idea, eh? Now before we do that, let me just explain to you what these buttons do differently from these buttons over here. And for that, I'm going to set the trigger back to go. Now watch what happens when I press the play button now. It fades in and it fades out. If I press on these buttons over here, you can probably already guess it. No fading. So these buttons over here, they just step through these individual steps of your sequence. While these buttons over here, they actually respect the timing. Only in forward direction though, you can see that if we go backwards, the timing or the fade timing just doesn't work. All right, so for quick experimenting, um, actually I want to go back to the first step. And so if we fade this in, ah, did you see what happened just now? If we fade in to this step where the dimmer is set to zero, then we get the effect that we wanted. But if we then go to the third cue, whoops, if we then go to the third cue, we don't want it to fade in. So this step right here, zero fade time, let's go to the next one. Fade out, perfect, let's keep it like that. Here we don't want to have a fade in, so let's set it to zero. Again, no fade in here, but a fade out, perfect. And now when we press play, yeah, we also want that to be set to zero. So now when we play this back, nothing happens. Let's just set it back to time. So now you can see that it jumps to the next step, but what's really cool is that it doesn't fade in anymore. It only fades out. And that's because we selectively set the fade values um, only on the cues where we actually fade out the dimmer. So that's already pretty cool, right? Now one thing I wanna show you, and I encourage you to just play around with this view as much as you can, right click and press follow. And now watch what happens. We have the same thing going, only now it jumps to the next step whenever it's ready. So the follow that we saw earlier where it just goes nuts, that actually only happens when you don't set any fade values. And that's how we just recreated the sequence over here, exactly the same look. Only when we go in here, again, right click on this, uh, we can see that the fade times are actually back here and they're 0.5 seconds. Now the fade times over here, they're actually set in the programmer. And I also want to show you that. And in the meantime, I can also show you how uh, you can actually edit a sequence or edit a cue rather. So let's just create, set these all to zero. And now when we press go, it just blinks in and is immediately off again. Again, also really cool look. I mean, it's just so subtle. It's like so fast, but it, it looks so cool, doesn't it? Man, I love that. <laughs> Dude, I could do I could do this all day. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to set the fade value off this 
Q that fades to zero, but we don't want to do it in this fade column, but instead in a way that I showed you last week. And for that, we need to know how we can edit this Q right here. And that's actually really easy once you assign a sequence to a executor because you just go edit current Q. And now you can see that the values, that the values that are inside of this Q actually get loaded into the programmer. So now if we were to set this to 50, and you can see over here, once we actually add values on top of what was already there, the update value or the update button is highlighted. So now I'll just click on the update button. And it's going to ask you update sequence 17 Q2. Yes, please. And now we don't see the playback controls anymore. That's sort of unfortunate. Just close this window, right click on this again. Perfect. So now we can already see if we just step through these that the dimmer is not turned off in the second queue, but only set to 50. And again, here we can actually see the effects of tracking. Now this stays on um, throughout the whole sequence because we didn't turn it quite off. This can be useful, but also really annoying. So just look out for that a little bit. What we wanted to do instead though, we didn't want to change the dimmer. I just wanted to change, show you that update mechanism. Just click on the second queue and then go edit current queue. By the way, this will always blink whenever you're in edit mode. So now again, let's take a look at the values that we set for this queue. That's perfectly right. That's the dimmer value. We want it to be at zero. And now what I showed you last week is that there's a fade layer and the fade layer will give you the, the chance to set a fade value for all the values that you set in the programmer. So right now we just have the dimmer value. Just go to fade, give it a one second fade out. And now again, the update button is highlighted because we have new values that we can apply here. Click OK. And I'll close this, right click on it again to have these playback controls. And now let's take a look and it fades out nicely. What's sort of confusing here is that these fade values didn't get changed, but instead all of these fade values that you set actually will be put into these uh, later columns over here. So usually what I do, I'm just going to delete this. Usually what I'm, I'm going to do is actually use this right here. Um, it can be useful to actually store directly in the programmer so you don't have to step through the individual sequences or step through the individual steps later on to find the right one that you wanted to fade out. Uh, so this can help you a little bit, save time. You just need to know where it is in the programmer. Also one thing that's really cool about a sequence being assigned to an executor, you can easily label it. So now let's just call it LEDs out or LEDs fade out. So that's it for this video. If you like what you saw, please give me a like, give me some feedback if um, you have questions in the comments down below. And also consider subscribing to this channel. It's a very, very important thing for us YouTubers. So thanks a lot for every subscriber. New episodes coming every week. You can check out the schedule right after this video. And also most importantly, I have a Facebook group where all of you can meet and ask questions and get help really fast by people that might actually also know a better answer than me. So make sure to join the Facebook group. It's down in the video description. And with that being said, my name is Jonas. Thank you so much for watching. See you next week. Thank you.